Hey everyone, we're at uh, Monktoberfest, the uh, Red Monk Brew Conference in Portland, Maine, and with me I have Donny Burkholz from the Gen 2 Project, and Donny talked this afternoon, uh, his, his, he had the controversial title, uh, or I don't know if controversial is the right word, but he had the, the interesting title uh, of uh, How Assholes Can Ruin Your Community, I'm paraphrasing of course, but uh, Donny, uh, you, you talked, you had kind of a case study read about your own uh, experiences in the Gen 2 Project, and how, you know, a, a couple of assholes... Uh, stopped the growth, I guess, of, of the membership of the community. Do you want to talk a bit about that? Yeah, so uh, Gentoo started about 10 years ago, and we were growing for about the first five years at a huge rate, and we'd gotten up to about 250 contributors. And then something happened, and it took a long time to figure out what happened. And finally, this year, I finally had the answer that I could quantitate. That graph was brand new that I showed you during the talk. And it, what you saw is that things are growing and growing and growing, and then finally they drop. And then something else happened, and it flattened out. And so looking back at what events were happening around that time frame, what we found is that everything started slowing down when we got these abusive contributors as part of our community. And finally, two years later, we got rid of them, and suddenly we weren't going downhill anymore. Everything stabilized. So what happened is we have these three people out of 250 people in our community that have essentially stalled the whole project. And how, how do you identify people as, as assholes? I mean, there's all kinds of potentially assholish behavior. Mm-hmm. So, is that, yeah, hold on. Okay. Um, for us, it's essentially that... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> for us, it's essentially in the eye of the beholder, right? So it's not, do you feel like you're being a jerk? It's, how does that person feel after they're treated that way? And if they feel bad after talking to you, then you're an asshole. Okay, and uh, I mean, you, you talked about using some metrics around it uh, t- to, you know, show people uh, quantitatively that they they've been an asshole. Uh, what kind of what kind of quantitative stuff can you show people? Well, one great example is taking advantage of some of the data that you just generate by being a community. So, looking at mailing list statistics, for example, if you look at who's posting and when, um, and whether if you have somebody posting and nobody responds to them then something happened, you know, whether it's a social problem or a technical problem. And then you got to go track these people down and ask them, what's going on? Why aren't you responding? Um, why is this person chasing you away? And Because it could be that they're just a technical genius, and every post is just the solution to a problem. <laughs> yeah. Or it could be something worse. Okay. And so I guess, do you have a, a, a kind of a three strikes on your out rule, or, or how, how do you manage that whole process of you know firing people from what is essentially a volunteer community? It's a hugely difficult problem to solve, um, and what essentially we've been working with about a hundred strikes, <laughs> because three just isn't enough to convince people there's a problem. Right. Um, it could be just you know somebody had a bad day, rather than an ongoing pattern that really requires some attention. Um, so for us, it's been how many people are actually complaining about this rather than whether it's just a visible thing that I notice as somebody who's reading a mailing list. Um, so once it got to the point that we were getting you know, complaints from our own developers about a single person you know, two or three times a week, we figured there's a pretty serious problem here and somebody has to act. And like I say, how, how, do, you, how do you fire someone from a volunteer community? There's not a whole lot you can do. What you can do is you can say they cannot contribute any more code, and you can block them from mailing lists. And since volunteer open source communities are built around the ability to participate both in a mailing list or some kind of IRC chat room thing and contribute the code, um, by blocking those two things, there's no incentive left for them to stick around and no way for them to stick around, really. The concern that comes up is... Well, if you're on this virtual community, they could just pretend to be somebody else. Yeah. Um, but they're still going to act the same way, and so they'll get called on it eventually. Okay. And just looking back at your own experience, uh, knowing what you know now, is there anything you would have done differently? It's always, every time you do something like this, the thing you would do differently is act faster. And you would say, why didn't I do that earlier? Because everything is just so much better now. But because it's this gradual downhill slide you don't realize how bad things have gotten. You build up this tolerance. And then it goes away, and suddenly, you know, the sun is out and the birds are singing. (laughs) Great. Super. Donnie, this is great. Thanks a million.